What's up, everybody? And welcome to a very impromptu session of Spectator Mode Podcast. It's Keith Mitchell here, and joining me is my buddy, Carl May Smart. Say hello, Carl. Hello, Carl. I was waiting for you to say that. So there's been a lot of news that broke out today, and we didn't want to wait till Friday to talk about Spectator Mode. But actually, Carl has an interesting situation, so I'm going to let him take it from here. That'll be our talking point for this evening. So, Carl, take it away, man. Uh, most recently, there has been a lot of leaks pertaining to the Xbox Series S and X versions of the system. We have been able to pertain that, yes, the old digital Xbox Series S actually exists. We have found the design for it, which has been memed to death, which is hilarious. We also found out that it has a price point, two ninety nine US, which is not too bad. And a lot of people have gone from that particular pricing to state that the Xbox Series X will be costing four ninety nine US. Something that we've all been pertaining and sort of going, this is what's going to happen price point wise for a long time here on Spectator Mode. But other things that came out were also the release date of November tenth for both consoles, alongside the specs of the actual. Xbox Series S console. So it was basically the smaller digital version that got a lot of information suddenly appear up, but it's given us a lot of stuff to compare it to. Now, what's been more interesting is what's been happening in my home country of Australia. Not long after, probably about 24 hours after all this information hit, we have been given more information on how and when pre-ordering is going to be available. Also, pricings for our version of the Xbox All Access. Trade-in deals and everything else when it comes to getting those two particular consoles. Wait, you got trading uh, deals already? We got trading deals already. Wow, nice. Which, which, which sort of bring me to a nice sort of conclusion, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, just to sort of keep going on the information, at least here in Australia, just remember anything I say from this point on will be Australian pricing only, not American pricing. So if all the numbers make you confused, well, then explain. Then that's just exchange rate problems. Now, EB Games here in Australia, which we all know is a subdivision of GameStop International, uh, they told their employees to be ready very soon for the pre-order session of the Xbox consoles. There are some limitations on what's going to be happening. The Xbox Series X and S will be available for pre-order in Australia on September 22nd. I believe this is also available in the US on the same day. The EB Games website has received a huge server upgrade because guess what? Pre-orders are online only due to the whole COVID situation. That's going to be absolutely terrible. Deposit for the console is 200 Australian dollars, and it is restricted to one console per custom. It is still unclear on whether you can order both the X and the S at the same time at $200 pre-order a piece, or whether you can only choose one or the other. You've got more information uh, than we have, that's for sure. In terms of trade-in deals, well, I should also mention that the full Australian pricing is... Four ninety nine Australian dollars for the Series S and seven hundred and fifty Australian dollars for the Series X, which is about what people would predict. I still can't get over how much they they get you guys with that. That is just ridiculous. Well, to to be honest, uh, somebody did actually work it out. Uh, the exchange rate on the Series X from four ninety nine US dollars turned into six hundred and four forty odd something dollars. Oh no, just a bit, a bit of, I, I can't remember how their math worked, like the exact numbering, but if you add that plus our, our general uh, service tax, our GST, which is a flat 10% across all products throughout Australia, it comes to, I think it's about $725 after conversion and GST. So $750, it's not that much of a ripoff. It's just the way that conversion rates, like how low our dollar is at the moment, plus our, our general tax that needs to be placed upon it. So, is so that that's sort of the math. Is that attractive for you? Well, to be honest, I paid around the same price for the PlayStation 4 when it was released. I, I think I paid about 700 uh, for the PlayStation 4 when it was released back in the day, and that was on launch day. So 700 to 750 that's what I was predicting, what I consider reasonable for the console, given the American pricing and everything else. The S coming out at 500 that's about what the... I think the Xbox One S came out at about 399 Australian. So for this one to come out at 499 yeah, it's doable. Wait, what However, did you say it came in 399 The X? The S. Okay. So, so the smaller white one. 
which I ended up buying eventually. I'm really surprised that you guys got more information. All we were told is certain outlets, I think Best Buy, Amazon, the Microsoft Store, and I think one other outlet are going to start accepting pre-orders soon. We don't have a date. We didn't get information as regarding trading deals at GameStop. I would hope they have some kind of trading deals because there's a lot of people who have Xbox One S's and X's that are looking to trade in. And we have not been told about the delay yet. Or I'm sorry, the uh, the shortage. I'm sure that's coming. Well, I don't think Xbox is having the shortage from, from what I understand. And uh, as of one hour while, ago while we are recording this, Xbox America put out the tweet that the pre-orders will start on September 22nd. So... And they have confirmed the four ninety nine and two ninety nine price points, respectively. Right, which is which is something honestly that they weren't prepared to do. Uh, Phil Spencer actually went to Twitter earlier and said, "Hey, you know, because of the leak from yesterday and the memes from yesterday, they decided to just do it now because." Oh yeah, oh yeah, they they got they got yeah. somebody they got done goofed the in the company, yeah, and they got raked over the coals, and they just went, "Screw it, let's run with it." I, I will uh, say, to be, I honest, to be, honest, to be honest, I I would not have been surprised if they would have were holding holding this off until the end of the month originally. They, they said next week they were going to do it. So next week, so they would have brought it out just before they uh, put out the pre orders. Yep. So a week before pre order. Yep. That's scary. How like close they have to go just for the pricing, just because of the the competition wars. I don't think uh, it was a competition where I just think that they didn't want somebody else to beat them again because you got to think about it. All the PR they had lined up for the uh, Xbox Series S and then somebody just went and leaked everything. They probably felt like crap. Oh, of- yeah. Well, and truly. Now, going back to what we're doing here in Australia, uh, they are doing trade-in deals. They are very specific in how the deals are done. The Xbox Series X, which is retailing for $749 without any trade-ins, goes down to $399 Australian if you trade in the Xbox One X only. So you have to give up your Xbox One X in order to get that, uh, what's that, about $350 off. Almost half off? Close, Close to it, yeah. Now, the Xbox Series S, and this is where it starts to build my conundrums, is it's four ninety nine without trade, right? Two ninety nine if I trade in my Xbox One S. I would totally do it. Yeah, well, that that's my my conundrum at this point is, what do I go for? Because either way, I've got to put two hundred dollars down to start with. Do I go as I propose this in our in our Discord chat? Do I trade in my Xbox One S and get the two hundred dollars off the price, meaning I only have to pay ninety nine dollars on launch? Or do I keep my console and then coin flip for whether I want to get the Series X or the Series S at the full price? So from my perspective and what I've been looking at and talking about and actually did an article about earlier today, I legitimately don't see a reason to keep your Xbox One S only because everything is backwards compatible, which is a great thing for the Xbox ecosystem. Your controllers, the games, everything downside is if you go for the s you don't get a disk drive everything will have to be played via xbox game pass and that's how you do your backwards compatibility which i don't think they're actually doing disk based i'm not sure about that one see that's that's where i run into the conundrum since i bought my xbox one s so the, the one that i have now i currently have four games on disc i don't really play them at all i don't really bother with them at all most of the games that i play on my xbox one s comes from game pass now there's another option that i haven't spoken about yet which is the xbox all access now this system is like paying a a layaway or something over time except you get the console up front there's a deal struck with telstra which is a major communications uh company here in australia where I could pay either thirty six dollars, I think it's either thirty six or twenty six a month for the Xbox Series S with Game Game Pass Ultimate, which as of today now includes Xbox Gold plus the Xbox Game Pass plus EA Play. Yeah, which you got announced today as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can pay. I think it's again it's twenty six or thirty six a month for twenty four months. Or I can pay 46 per month for 24 months and get the Series X with the exact same inclusions. It also comes down to how much is going to cost me in the long run. So I, I actually sat there, I crunched some numbers. 
I'm actually saving about a hundred dollars getting the Xbox Series X through the all access system than buying it outright and then paying for uh Ultimate for two years. They're not really charging you any kind of interest whatsoever. They're pretty much saying here's no, an Xbox. No, no, no interest at all. Yeah, they're like, here's an Xbox, pay us twenty four months, here you go. And that is an amazing deal. If that doesn't tell you that Microsoft wants to move Xboxes, I don't know what does. It's ridiculous. You'd be a fool to not take advantage of it if you're short on money in your credits, right? Because I'm pretty sure they're going to, they will be checking your credit to make sure you don't take it. And run. Well, it's not so much that they don't do a credit check because it's basically they add it onto your uh, your service bill. They, they go through the same. You still need ID and everything else to prove that you're over the age 18 and all of that stuff. All I'd be doing is adding an extra 33 for the Series S, 46 for the Series X for 24 months onto um, whatever my contract is. At the moment, I only use Telstra for my internet, which is 100 bucks a month. So, oh. And that's split between three people in my house. So I guess you pretty much have a, a, a clear-cut decision then. You know what exactly to do. If you can go all access, pay as you go, get the Xbox Series X, and then you can either hang on to your 1S or you could trade it in for some games or stuff. I don't know. Or just keep well, it. That's, well, that, well, that's the other thing is like I'm still very, very because like at the moment, uh, what I've been doing in preparation for this, I've been paying off my credit card, and I sort of figured I would need at least fourteen to fifteen hundred to buy both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. I'm currently two hundred and fifty dollars away from that goal, which will come basically when I do the pre-order. That's the the biggest problem is like I don't know what to do. In, in a way, I know what I'm doing. I don't know if I really want to do it. It's like I basically. I can guarantee you most of my stuff on the Xbox is going to be digital. Yeah. The only problem is, is do I want to really push that 4K limit with the 120 FPS? Or do I really, or do I want to go 1440 with the possible 120? Then do I, do I want to make sure I get the, the one terabyte hard drive versus the 512? You know, it's, it comes down to little technical bits and pieces, which you and I love talking about when it comes to these things, as to where do I want to go from here? I'm in the go big or don't go at all. If you get the Series X, you're getting everything that the Series S gives you. But if you go with the Series S, you're paying less. You're getting less because you don't need that 4K gaming. But then if you ever decide later on down the road, hey, I want to jump into 4K gaming, and I want that one terabyte internal drive because the, the digital only comes with 512, which is a dumb decision, by the way. If you're going all digital, you think it would come with a bigger drive. But I digress. They kind of made a decision for you. You don't want 4K? Go here. But then you're going to pay us more down the road if you decide to move out to 4K. Or here's the big enchilada. Here's the big boy right now. Jump in and don't have anything that can take advantage of the system for a while. The other problem for me is that I'm a retro gamer as well. You know, so I've got a lot of Xbox and Xbox 360 titles sitting here on disc. If I do go to the digital, well, then what do I play them on? You know, obviously I do have an Xbox 360 and an Xbox One, but those consoles are getting so old that I don't want to sort of play on them just in case something goes wrong and they cost more than what they're worth to fix. Then those consoles are now starting to increase in price because they're starting to become rare on the secondhand market. Do I keep the Xbox One S to help with that retro gaming side of things as well? Well, that's my question. I don't recall them ever saying anything about um, backwards compatibility outside of, of Game Pass. I, at least I, I haven't seen anything and I haven't paid attention to anything. So I'm I'm not sure how that actually works with the Xbox Series S and X. They've only ever talked about Game Pass. So I'm not sure about that. That's a good question. I I, I don't have an answer. Yeah, no, that, that, that's it. I've been looking around, even talking to people I know who have either worked with Xbox or work currently with the company. And the, oh, they're staying tight-lipped, or they don't actually know themselves what's going on. Um, even right now, I'm looking to see, hey, what is the actual answer? And nobody has mentioned that. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, personally, I'm leaning on keeping my 1S, just, just as sort of a backup system. And maybe looking at going at the Series X, but I'm not sure if I want to pay outright, or whether I want to do the 24-month deal. Well, I know for me, I'm trading in 
one on my Xbox One Xs. Yeah, see, that's the you got you got multiples of the same console, so you can sort of do that trade in trick, which yeah. I can actually, which I can actually do with the PS4 because I've got a spare PS4 sitting here as well, doing absolutely nothing. Oh, my PS4 Pros, they're they're gone, both of them. Bye. I don't want you here anymore. Because to be honest, nobody plays them but me. Nobody touches the Xbox, uh, Xbox Series or the Xbox One X. But me either, and I haven't played with mine in quite some time. For yeah, I, 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 I booted mine up uh, last night, just for the time in many, many months, and it's like I had to do like three, four gig worth of updates to the system. Then I had to update programs. Then, then I had to actually go into each game and work out which one came from X, uh, from Game Pass because I need to find out which ones I had installed that are no longer working because they've left Game Pass. And then it's yeah, like, okay, now I'll, now I'll jump on Game Pass and have a look at what's on there in order to download something to play for the next couple of months until it disappears. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm still looking. Nobody has mentioned how this is going to work. I'll be honest. I haven't really done much of the uh, Xbox One backwards compatibility because I don't really have many. Do you know how it works now? Like if I went to a store and bought an Xbox 360 game. Actually, you know what? I ran into my question because I have Red Dead Redemption 1 for Xbox One. I didn't play it. My son took it out. And it downloaded it. So you put the disc in and it downloads. So there's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. With Xbox 360 games, some some that won't actually download, some will still read off the disc. There is a compatibility list online between the, for the Xbox 360 games that work on the Xbox One uh, that makes it a little bit easier as well with Xbox games. I found out of what I've got, which is probably about, say, about 30 to 40 Xbox 360 games and about 20 odd xbox games that maybe one or two games won't actually work with the xbox one console so that when that happens i just boot up the old console and play it that way i'm again there's no, nobody knows what's going on with backwards compatibility for the the series era of consoles uh I would the most assume, i've heard I was so, the, the, mo the, mo the, mo the most i heard was somebody said that you can use a standard usb 3.0 or 3.1 style hard drive to save or back up your games onto that drive and you can just plug it into the xbox yes. and it'll recognize those particular games the digital ones only and you can play them that way yeah microsoft actually mentioned that a couple months ago that's exactly yeah but doing. as as for as for disc based games they said all i've heard is i haven't got a clue i i, I think it's probably a safe assumption to assume it's going to work just like it does the one that you put the disc in and it downloads the game it's really weird that it hasn't been uh specific as to how that works but yeah so i'm, I'm actually reading another article that looks like it might have the answer it doesn't say anything other than hey backwards compatibility is coming in the next couple of months so it doesn't really tell you i'm going to err on the side of caution and say it's the same way it works in the xbox one it will download the game if you install it but if you have physical games and you get the xbox one s without a disk drive then you're you're out of luck yeah pretty much so i i'm thinking i'm gonna definitely probably go for the uh series x and i think i'm probably just gonna buy it outright just because reasons no, that uh, makes perfect sense like i could i could quite happily go for the series x and just run that but i have a feeling like i i, I want to try and actually get the best out of the the consoles i do actually regret not buying an xbox one x when i was when i was choosing the console to buy uh i reckon i sort of missed out on something there sort of when it comes to 4k and stuff like that you really like the, the like, like the, the series s or the, the xbox one s i should say does 4k fine that's no problems but i i do feel like i should have gone for the upper echelon console well it, it only does 4k playback but you you didn't honestly you have a pc you didn't miss much of anything you really didn't well see, that's, that been, that's was... been the other that's been the other problem too is with these uh the 30 the 30 uh series coming out from nvidia yeah so, even even the even the entry level card the the 3070 is only 50 bucks more australian than buying an xbox series x it is an interesting time for gamers it is going to be a very expensive shopping holiday for gamers yeah it is it's definitely going to be a very very interesting and uh i mean curious time for gamers as to what people are going to do with their money i mean we're going to wrap this up soon but just just a quick calculation Xbox Series X is four ninety nine, five hundred dollars. The PlayStation Five will likely be that same price. 
The entry level RTX 3070 is that same price. That is $1,500. Something to think about if you dive in yeah, and I, get I, everything. I, yeah, I, I know that. I think definitely this has been an interesting thing because I know a lot of us, at least us here on the uh, Spectator Mode podcast, have been saying we can leave this, we can leave this, we can leave this. Now that we know all the details, we're like, I need it. I don't think we need <laughs> I don't need it, but I'm going to get it for yeah. coverage to, yeah, for the site exactly it and that is the last that, <laughs> that is the last thing that i am still very questioning about what is going to go on with uh hdcp or high definition copy protection i know xbox has a nice history where it will automatically switch off when you're capturing a game yeah but if you're will. streaming but if you're streaming a video then it puts it on which is great sony please do like you did with the playstation 4 make it an option or something or an automatic switch like the the like the uh, the Xbox, because frankly, I'm still trying to find something to crack your goddamn PS3 stuff many years later, and I'm resort I'm gonna have to support to uh, composite cables. That was an earlier well, time when we were all naive and nobody really knew what was what. I know, but the, the thing, but, but the thing, but the thing is, when they got around to doing that. Like when they like it wasn't an option straight out the gate with the PS4, but when they added it to the PS4, why didn't they add it to the PS3 as well? That is one thing that still confuses me to this day. But uh, that's again another conversation for another time. But Man, I'm just uh, crying it, right now, I'm thinking of all the money that's going to be coming out of my my bank account and my my uh, my credit card. Oh, my wife dude. looking at me and yelling at me, <laughs> saying, "You spent how much?" Not to mention, I yeah. also want to get another TV. Yeah, it's like crazy. my like believe me. You know, all this saving that I've been doing over the past couple of months just to make sure that I'm ready for this. Uh, and looking at my credit card, all of a sudden I'm going to have to lose half of, well, pretty much all of what I've done so far. It's going to make me cry. But you know what? That's the price of what we do here. That is the you price know, the, of the, gaming. That is the pri- it's the price of gaming. It's the price of working for with a gaming website. You know, we have to make sure we are up to date on these things. The only problem now is, where am I going to put it? Because uh, I don't I floor. don't know the... I, on, the on the floor, where all the dust is. Yeah, that's a good idea, dude. I think we talked it off. Let's go ahead and close this out. As always, everybody, thanks for checking out this impromptu Spectre Mode podcast. We may do more of these because this is actually fun. Just sitting down and talking and not waiting for the actual podcast in the week. Because... I'm pretty sure Sloane's going to do something before this week is over. And as always, you can check us out over at uh, Buzzsprout. I said it right this time. Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else podcasts are hosted. You can always check us out on Twitch and also on YouTube. Or stop by theoutofhaven.net and find us there as well. Any parting words, Carl, before we get out of here? As always, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're looking to buy an Xbox or a PlayStation or whether you're wanting to keep your Nintendo Switch, which might be going 4K later in this year for him as I were, uh, uh, true. <clears throat> Bullshit. You know, as, 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 lo- as long as you enjoy the games you are playing, then that is the best thing for you. Including so good Stadia. gaming. Happy- yep. Well, no, we don't talk about Stadia. We don't talk about stu- Stadia. We don't yeah. talk about what with us. The, the shield we don't apple talk about any of that no Ooh, they're, they're all dead oh yeah yeah no we don't talk about any of those <laughs> but either way as long as, as long as you're playing what you're playing just be happy and treat everybody with respect you know let's get let's get rid of this toxic mentality in gaming and yelling and screaming at each other like we're 12 year olds leave that to the Fortnite kitties we're out of here